thank you, Jesus, that we, when we are at war with sin, when we are at war with our flesh, when we are at war with the enemy, my Lord God, when we are at war, my Lord God, uh, with ourselves, Lord, that you are the Prince of Peace, my Lord Jesus. And my King, I thank you, Jesus, that the only way that you could have rescued me out of the funk that I was in is to be the mighty one. And God, that is you. So I thank you, Jesus. And God, I thank you that now I get to be the workman, my Lord Jesus. God, that I get to go on, my Lord God, uh, uh, singing your praises, my Lord God. Not just with my words, not just with my lips, my Lord Jesus, God, but with the life that I live, my King. And when I'm dead and gone and they bury me, my Lord Jesus, I thank you that the work you've done in me and through me, my Lord Jesus, cannot be stopped, my Lord. So indeed, my Jesus, we give you all glory today, God. But we ask that you straight rock our face off, my Lord Jesus. God, that after service, after the altar call, my Lord God, we won't be able to rush out because we'll have to look for our faces under the seats, my Lord Jesus, because they just straight rocked off, my Lord God. So Holy Spirit, we just ask that you have your way today. With each and every single one of us, have your way. You are indeed Emmanuel. You are God with us. Holy Spirit, we thank you that your presence indeed is here. Lord, some of us know you and we welcome you. Others of us, God, don't know who you are. So I ask that the gentlemen that you are, that you would expose yourself to them today in such a way, God, that they would desire, that they would desire to be a housing unit, my Lord God, that they would desire to be that temple, that they would desire to have Holy Spirit to dwell in them. So my King, we just ask God that you have your way with us. And Lord, we thank you for our breakthroughs. We thank you for our deliverance. God, we thank you for life that's found in the mighty one. That's you, my King. Thank you, we praise you, we love you. And all God's baby said, hallelujah. You guys may be seated in the presence of Jesus. Can we give our worship another hand? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good, amen. All the time. Hallelujah, I know that's right. It is also so good to see your beautiful faces in Jesus' name. Man, uh, uh, we welcome y'all to Source Church. We are so blessed, honored, and stoked to have you guys with us, man. Uh, uh, Richmond Campus, man, we welcome you guys watching online. Praise the Lord. And anybody else, we are excited to have you with us, man. Uh, just real quick, I just want to go over a few things before we get into the word. Uh, one, uh, if you're new here, we are in an awesome sermon series called Stranger Things. If you haven't watched the show... And you are a mouth breather. But, uh, but there's still time for forgiveness for you in Jesus' name. But uh, so the uh, set looks kind of weird. And, and uh, uh, it, it is dope. It's my favorite. But, uh, uh, but it's coming off of the uh, Stranger Things uh, show. So check it out. It's awesome. Don't be a 10. Be an 11. Praise the Lord. But um, also, man, I just want to let you guys know. We were so blessed. Uh, I pray that everybody had a blessed, awesome Thanksgiving. The church itself, man, we were able to help seven families, and it was so awesome. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It was dope, man. I called Heidi into my office a uh, 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 little while back, man, and was talking to her about uh, what I would like to do for Thanksgiving, man. Uh, we were talking about reaching out to the school. She got a phone call, uh, made a phone call immediately with the schools. They connected with us. We were able to help families to them. We had an, uh, uh, an anonymous uh, donator, man, who brought in some turkeys and the fixings, man, enough to uh, supply for five families. So that was just absolutely awesome. So we just praise God for what well, Holy Spirit's doing. Your guys' uh, uh, willingness uh, to sow into it is absolutely awesome. So uh, uh, there was some bellies fed and some very thankful people over the uh, holiday. Amen. It's a beautiful thing. Also, we had stuffed the bus on uh, uh, Saturday. Praise Lord. If you helped with that, would you please stand? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We just want to applaud you guys. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We got some pictures, man. We're going to throw up. I got a handful of pictures, but these are dope. The bikers rode through. <laughs> the bikers. <laughs> it was dope, man. Check them out in there shopping, getting some bikes. Hey, pause right there. Is that Stephen Furtick in the background? <laughs> How you keep going? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Check it out, man. Right? I got a bunch so you could just kind of, hey, there's our man Terry. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, there he is again. Hallelujah. Putting some money in there. Thank you, Jesus. And then 
We're trying to give, trying to keep some hoodlums away. Praise the Lord. Look, I was, I was in my sister's little, Nora's little backpack thing. So, sister was carrying me around. B boy looking at us like, man, they are crazy. Praise the Lord. Heidi, Heidi caught me playing with some toys. But look, right off the gate, man, those, those are the, like the first thing in the bus, man, was five bikes, dude. We ended up with 14 bicycles. Absolutely amazing. That's, that's it, getting stuffed. And I'm going to show you guys some, uh, yeah. No, they came out and said no soliciting, so we had to get everybody off of you. See, that's why they came out, praise the Lord. Listen, my man, MVP, dude. Right? Right? And then his, his partner, check this out. Now watch this. She said, oh, you're going to try and walk away? I will follow you. I was telling you that the kids need some toys. I said, okay. I said, okay. Come on, man. She's from Pittsburgh. She'll cut you. Praise the Lord. But it was just dope, man. Oh, my goodness, what? Hallelujah. <laughs> but, uh, but, man, you could just keep flicking through, man. But we just had an amazing blessed time, man. So the community showed up and showed out in an insane, crazy way. Like I said, uh, uh, 14 bikes, man, and toys upon toys upon toys upon toys, man, for the, uh, the beautiful kids in our community. <laughs> right. Praise God. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Whew. That was some stranger things. <laughs> Cafe Lachine blessed us with some goodies. Praise the Lord. Listen. There's the bikers. We were keeping an eye on them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Check this out. This little girl was absolutely precious. Is her name Hope? Hope. Hope. She is beautiful. And uh, uh, her daddy, Chris, man, me and Chris go way back. Praise the Lord. Uh, but uh, what's cool is uh, that's the first time I really ever met her, but she kept wanting to hug me. And, like, uh, when, when I would pull away, she would grab my ears. And she, she said, these things are neat. And then she would want to touch my beard. He goes, dude, she just loves you, right? I said, thank you, Jesus. That bless my heart. We just met this guy. Praise the Lord. He was going shopping. His mom said, I lost him. I didn't know where he was. But when it was picture time, he came, hallelujah. I said, you want in the picture? He said, yeah. I said, okay, come on, baby. Let's rock and roll. But, uh, but hallelujah. But it was just absolutely awesome. What was cool with the Captain and the Sheen thing, man, some of the people who gave uh, uh, gifts, uh, Vertigo Tattoo also had a thing out there that if you donated, then you could put your name into a raffle and you could win a $200 gift certificate, right? So each person who gave, I put my name on the raffle. <laughs> no, I'm picking. But... Uh, so we would bring them over there, they'd fill out the raffle, they would stick it in there, man, and they you know, get a goodie and stuff. And everybody was like, man, this is so good. My goodness. I was like, well, thank you. I was spent all night in the kitchen. And, uh, uh, but not really. But when they would go, it's so good, I'd go, it's capital machine. And nine times out of ten, it was, well, yeah, go figure. That's why it's so good. <laughs> Hallelujah, right? We were like, yeah, you're right. You're right. Hallelujah. But, uh, but, man, it was just a blessed time. Our volunteers, y'all straight were amazing and were so willing to be out there past your uh, uh, posted time. So we are just, uh, we salute you guys in Jesus' name. And it was uh, absolutely wonderful. To get into it, man, we are excited to continue in our sermon series called Stranger Things. Praise the Lord. And it's been so cool to me. We've been out Christmas shopping and or just in public in general. And we've had people come up to us, tell us, man, that they've been watching the Stranger Things uh, uh, sermon series online. And they're liking the twist, which is just awesome, man, to hear of people watching us uh, online and, and, and checking it out at later times, man. It's just so cool. We've enjoyed this. I pray that you guys indeed have also been enjoying this. And what we've been talking about with the Stranger Things, man, uh, linking it to the show, but most importantly, we've been talking about the Stranger Things in Scripture and how oftentimes when it's the Stranger Things in Scripture, Holy Spirit is generally on scene. Right? Every time he shows up, something awesome, something amazing, something crazy, something unforgettable, something strange always happens. 
every single time that he shows up on scene. So we pray in Jesus' name today that, Holy Spirit, you will cause some strange things to happen. Lord God, that people indeed, my Lord God, will begin to receive you and look at you and know you in ways, Jesus, that they have never done before. So Holy Spirit, make yourself at home in this place, in our lives, my Lord God. And we thank you for doing some strange, crazy things today. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. And it's cool, whenever he's on scene, man, you know something's about to go down. And so, too, in the show, when Eleven shows up on scene, I always get excited. She's my favorite. But uh, uh, every time she shows up on scene, man, uh, 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 something absolutely crazy, you know, is going to go down. And speaking of Eleven, if you can put that hush picture back up. Well, you don't have to. They're just... Uh. If I could have Will come up here just for a second. <laughs> Look at my man, yeah. Straight up. <laughs> Look, we are rocking the 80s, right? The show is based in 1983. <laughs> and my man has straight rocked it with each service indeed that he is here. And listen, mad props, because a lot of people, you wouldn't have... Uh, you just wouldn't wear them, praise the Lord. <laughs> but my man, to God be the glory, you are awesome. Rocks it. And I did say this now, and I know he fixed his hair for this, but I dig the hair. Right? But you, but you notice his earring? He even got a dangly earring. <laughs> my, man, my man is killing it. <laughs> Love you, brother. <laughs> he is absolutely awesome. And an amazing sport he is, man, to God be the glory. <laughs> but... Uh, but we've been getting to know Holy Spirit in this sermon series, man. And then we've been getting to know him by allowing him, not man, but by allowing him to, to teach us and to show us who he is, not from the word of man, but indeed from the word of God. Right? So we've been talking about who he is and what he does, and we've been talking about indeed how it is that he empowers us. And last week, man, we went over a bunch of scripture. If you were taking notes, awesome. Today we're going to go over a bunch more scriptures, so if you're taking notes, get ready. We're going to come out of Luke chapter uh, 24, and it says this, starting off at verse 49. It says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem, or wait in the city of Jerusalem, until you are uh, endued with the power on high. Have you ever had somebody give you a promise, only to never come through on their promise? And that's irritating. It stinks, right? On the flip side, have you ever been that purpose or, or that person to make a promise only to never come forth on that promise? That stinks, and you stink as a person if you did that. No, I'm just kidding. I kid. Come on, stop it. But it does stink, man, like when, like when you have to break a promise or you forget and you broke your promise or when somebody breaks a promise to you. Man, that stinks. And Jesus says, behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Jesus, God Almighty, Holy Spirit, one thing about them is they will never break their promise. Right? But what's so amazing is he says, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but wait. Hello. I send this promise, but if you want to receive this promise, then what I need you to do is not jump ahead of me. I need you to wait. So I send the promise of, of my Father upon you, wait. Terry, wait. Kick back, relax for a second. Wait for the power of the Holy Spirit. Wait for the power of the Most High to fall upon you. And then he goes on in Acts chapter 1. He says, uh, uh, Dear uh, 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 Theophilus, in the first volume of this book I wrote, now understand, in uh, um, Luke, that is uh, Luke the, uh, the disciple, the physician Luke, right? He writes the book of Luke. It ends in chapter 24, right? So then he goes on, and he is also the author of Acts, okay? So understand, he wrote Luke, and he wrote Acts. And so he's saying, he said, in the first volume of this book, I wrote on everything that Jesus began to do and teach until the day that he said goodbye to the apostles, the ones he chose through the Holy Spirit and was taken up to heaven. After his death, he presented himself alive to them in many different settings over a period of 40 days. He says, in face-to-face -face meetings, he talked to them about the things concerning the kingdom of God. As they met and ate meals together, 
He told them that they were on uh, uh, no account to leave Jerusalem, but must wait. Must wait for, the, uh, uh, for what the Father promised. The promise you heard from me. John baptized in water. You will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And soon. So here's Jesus again, man, and, and he's talking about uh, uh, this promise, but again, we must wait. We must wait for the promise of the Father, and this promise is going to be given upon you. It's going to fall upon you, but indeed, we must wait. So he mentions waiting, and he mentions promise, and the whole thing that the whole waiting and the promise is about and or for is Holy Spirit. See, Acts lets us know, man, that we have been baptized in water, but there is something greater than, than the baptism in water that we're going to indeed partake in, and it's going to be the baptism of Holy Spirit. Luke tells us to wait until we have the power of the Most High, the power of the Holy Spirit. See, we must understand it is the Holy Spirit who empowers us. It's Holy Spirit who allows us, who calls us to be everything that God Almighty has created us to be. It is the Holy Spirit who empowers us, who allows us to do, to step into, to conquer everything that He has called us to conquer. We cannot do it aside from Holy Spirit. We talked about it last week, how we cannot live this life away from Holy Spirit. There is no way that I could do, uh, that I could be who it is that He has called me to be without Holy Spirit. I would be frank and you would not like Him. Right? To be frank with you guys. Oh, come on. Stop it. Stop it. Right? You wouldn't want to listen to me. I wouldn't talk in a, a, a respectful manner. Right? It just would not be nice. So it's Holy Spirit who empowers me to be who it is that God Almighty created me to be. It is, there's no way that I could do the things that He has allowed me and allows me to do. I could not do the things that He has called me to do, that He's assigned for me to do, that He's planned for me to do, that He has purposed for me to do. I could not do them on my own. I have to have Holy Spirit. I need His strength. I need His obedience. I need His anointing. Right? I need His wisdom in order to be and do the things that Holy Spirit has called me to do. So how do we receive this, this baptism? Jesus is letting us know that we begin to wait. We open up our hearts and we desire Him and we wait for this promise. Holy Spirit, here I am I, and, and, and I want that baptism. I want you to fill me. But then we wait for Holy Spirit to straight up rock our world. We don't step ahead of Him. We don't get ahead of ourselves. Right? We listen to the Word of God. And see, when, when he's talking about this baptism of Holy Spirit, this promise of Holy Spirit, it's in reference to Acts chapter 2, when he's, uh, it's the Holy Spirit at the Pentecost, when Holy Spirit just straight falls on everybody, right? And then they begin to speak in tongues, and they begin to do insane, crazy, awesome things. And this promise actually goes back to Joel chapter 2, which lines up with Acts chapter 2, which lines up with Jeremiah 31. Right? It's awesome how we can see this promise of the Father, which is Holy Spirit, all the way in the Old Testament. Amen. It's not just a promise that Jesus began to talk about. It's a promise that was written before Jesus. And what's awesome is I love in Acts chapter 11, Peter, Simon Peter refers to the coming of the Holy Spirit, refers to this promise as the beginning. And see, this is powerful to me. I love how it's called the beginning when Holy Spirit fell upon them. And why do I love that so much? Because this is the time that they truly begin to live God's will. This is when they truly begin to know what life even is. This is when the beginning of their calling, the beginning of their purpose, the beginning of their plan, the beginning of their anointing. All of this took place, this is when they really begin to know the wisdom and know the knowledge and know the insight of Holy Spirit, and it could not happen before he fell upon them. See, Peter refers to it as the beginning. Why? Because this is the beginning of them truly knowing who they are, their true identity. Amen. Truth be told, man, I'm done. I'm sick and tired. I'm over Christians who are living in an identity crisis because there is absolutely no excuse for it. 
see the devil or, or our flesh. Man, it, it, it oftentimes, man, uh, begins to, to battle against us. And what it begins to do is it deceives us, it tricks us, it flips our minds upside down. And, and now what we begin to live as, we begin to act as somebody that we are not. And when we begin to live and act as somebody we are not, man, that gets us trapped in the upside down. And that's indeed where the enemy wants us. Because when we're trapped in the upside down, that's when the enemy is going to send his demonic forces, his, his demons, to come after us and indeed to still kill and destroy us, right? And when we're trapped in the upside down, most of the time, on our own, we don't begin to encourage ourselves, although scripture says sometimes, uh, David said, I had to encourage myself. Yeah, uh, yeah. Peter had to, uh, Paul had to preach himself happy. Hello. But nine times out of ten, when we're in the upside down, we don't do that. We stay in our pity party. We moan, groan, and complain. We begin to live in an identity crisis. We begin to believe that there's no way out of the upside down. And why is that? Because we don't know who and whose we are. The enemy has deceived us. We forget about and, and we don't activate the power that dwells inside of us. See, it's time as Christians, it's time as the church, it's time as we as people that follow Christ Jesus. It's time that we begin to allow stranger things to begin to take place in our lives, right? And to take place in our families and in our communities and in our churches. It's time that we begin to allow this to happen. And everything that we see in Scripture, the strangest things that we see in Scripture, when Holy Spirit shows up on scene, guess what? He wants to do the same exact thing today. Amen. And more. And more. It's absolutely amazing if we wait upon the promise of Holy Spirit to fall upon us, to be baptized in Holy Spirit, to be filled with Holy Spirit, right? And what's so cool, man, is, is when we begin to do that, we'll begin to see, like in, in Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 9, 17 and 18, man, it's when uh, 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 Paul is, is blinded, right, and he begins to go, and, and Ananias uh, uh, comes up to Paul, and he begins to lay his hands on him. And he says, man, the, uh, uh, the Lord told me to come and lay my hands on you. And I love it because he says that uh, uh, to lay my hands on you and to fill you with Holy Spirit. And it says in uh, 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 verse 18, it says uh, after he uh, began to fill him with Holy Spirit, I love this, instantly. Yeah. Instantly. Yeah. Something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized. Yeah. Right? This is dope to me. See, what's so cool is that people get it twisted and said that you have to be baptized with water first before you can be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Well, Scripture just proved you wrong. He was baptized with Holy Spirit, then he was baptized in water. Amen. Right? But that's off subject. But uh, what's so cool to me is he was baptized, he was filled with Holy Spirit instantly. Something like scales begin to fall off his eyes. When we are filled with Holy Spirit, when we wait for that promise of Holy Spirit, when we are baptized in Holy Spirit, Something like scales will begin to fall off of our eyes and he will begin to show us, reveal to us. He will allow us to see our true identity. And the truth is, before the baptism of Holy Spirit, we can't see our true identity. We honestly don't know who we are because of the scales that are upon their eyes. I don't care how good of a person you are. There's some amazing, nice, sweet Christians who don't truly know who they are. Because all they have is a relationship with Jesus and they don't have the baptism of Holy Spirit. But when he falls upon them, the scales begin to fall off their eyes. Look at a caterpillar. Right? When we see this caterpillar, man, he looks pretty cool. Right? But when we see him, man, do we see him for the, for the ugly uh, looking creature that he is? Right? Because that's what we begin to see. Or do we see him for the beautiful butterfly that he actually is? See, because the truth be told, man, they ha the caterpillar has a true identity, and his true identity is not a caterpillar. His true identity is the butterfly. And when the other insects come up on scene and begin to remind him of everything that he isn't, he's ugly, and he's going to crawl on his belly for the rest of his life, and, right? And he's, he's all this, and he's all... When the, in the insects are reminding him of everything that he isn't, telling him everything that's wrong with him, telling him everything that he's done wrong, the Creator quickly comes in and reminds him of everything he is. 
And see, nobody knows everything that he is like the creator. Why is that? Because the creator is the one who created him. So when the devil or when ourselves and or when our frenemies want to beat us down or beat us up and want to remind us of everything we've done wrong, want to remind us of everything that we've screwed up, want to remind us of everything that we didn't do, another job of Holy Spirit is to give us grace and mercy to be who we were truly created to be. And it is through him that he empowers us to be everything that he has created us to be. But we need the power of Holy Spirit. We need that grace and that mercy because without that grace and that mercy of Holy Spirit, understand we can't be who it is that he called us to be because we would screw everything up. We would stay stuck in the upside down. I promise you that. John 16, uh, uh, 8 and 9, it says, it says, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. This is dope. Holy Spirit, can, we got to pay attention to this, Christians. The Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. Notice, however, it's not plural. It's not sins. Right? It's sin. And this is where a lot of the church, a lot of Christians, screw everything up. And this is where we could truly see who is led by and not led by Holy Spirit. Because if you actually begin to study Scripture, this ain't what P. Frank says, this is what Scripture says. When you actually begin to break down Scripture, we have the same calling as the, as the disciples did. And we must understand our witness Break it down what he's talking about. Our witness is not to focus on people's sins, but to focus on the sin. Amen. See, Jesus paid the, cry, the price for our sins, and to God be the glory. But we must focus on the sin, not talking about with Christians. Now, after you, after you uh, uh, have begin to believe, now we can talk to you about your sins. Where, and, and where you're messing up at and, and allow Holy Spirit to convict you. But the world, we've got to pay attention to the scripture, right? He said that he convicts the world of sins. And the sin that he's convicting the world of is not believing in me, Jesus says. And see, this is powerful. Because if I'm going to somebody who's not believing in Jesus and I begin to, to talk to them about their sinful lifestyle they're living, they don't want to hear it. They don't even believe in Jesus. But if I could convict them through Holy Spirit of the sin of not believing in Him, now we have a starting point. Now we're able to begin to build off of that. Because here's the thing, if we believe in Him and if we live in Him, then that takes care of our sin behavior. And if we are living and claiming Him, but yet we are living in, or if, if we're living in sin but claiming him, then obviously there's a disconnect. And now if you're claiming him, now I have the right to correct, rebuke, and encourage you. But if you are of the world, then Holy Spirit's, what Holy Spirit's job is to do with you is to convict you of your sin of not believing in him. Because if we are, if we are living in and operating in the baptism of Holy Spirit, if we are living in and operating in and are living to, according to the will and the purpose and the plan of God, then we will know our true identity. But if we don't even believe in him, half the times we are accepting the things that we're doing because we don't even know who we truly are in the first place. So when we come at somebody like that, truth be told, all we end up doing is pushing them away. But when we allow Holy Spirit to do what Holy Spirit does, then indeed they will begin to be drawn to us. See, we were created, church, to be in constant fellowship with Holy Spirit. We were created to be in constant worship with God Almighty. And it is He, through the blood of Jesus, that washes away our sins. But we first must be convicted of the sin of not even believing in who He is. And then when we begin to allow this to take place and, and the baptism of Holy Spirit falls upon us, we will see our wrongs. 
That's when we will be able to be uh, 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 convicted, not by man, but convicted of Holy Spirit to the things that it is that we're doing in life that we need not to be doing in life. When it's the baptism of Holy Spirit, that's when we will begin to see the disconnect that we have with Him in the Word of God. That's when we'll begin to see that we're living in that identity crisis. It's when Holy Spirit brings all of this up to us. Another one of his jobs, praise the Lord, is to show us how madly and passionately God Almighty is in love with us, despite our sins. So many of us, yeah, yeah, God, God loves you, yeah, but he loves them, he doesn't love me because I. But the amazing thing is, man, one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to show us how passionately and madly in love God is with us, despite our sins. See, we have all been created with a plan. We've all been created with a purpose. Jeremiah 1.5 lets us know that, right? That before we saw the light of day, we were already set aside. God has already set us aside. That he had plans and a purpose for us before he even formed us in our mama's womb. Yeah. Ew. Right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we already have this plan. We already have this purpose. Now, maybe you're here today and you don't know that. Maybe you're here today and you don't believe that. Maybe you're here today, man, and you think that you're so worthless that there is no purpose. You think that you're not good enough for God to have a plan for you. So you're just hopeless. And I'm here to tell you, man, in the mighty name of Jesus, that's a lie from the upside down. Hello. It is indeed a lie. And that's why you're living in an identity crisis, because we've been listening to those lies. And we've got to begin to listen to Holy Spirit. When we listen to the lies of the enemy, remember, uh, he says that Jesus lets us know that he is the father of lies and that when he speaks, he speaks his native language of lies and that there is no truth in him. I tell people all the time, so when the devil says something to you, it's opposite day. Y'all remember that in school? (laughs) Right? Opposite day, teacher. I have no homework now. (laughs) Right? (laughs) And it's the same thing, man, when the enemy says, man, you're worthless. Awesome. It's opposite day, devil, so I'm worthy. Right? (laughs) So you got to begin to do this, man. And when we're stuck in the upside down, man, the only way out is through the empowerment of Holy Spirit. Is indeed for Him to rescue us. And when we have that baptism of Holy Spirit, that's when our eyes will be, our, ear, our eyes will begin to be open and our ears will begin to be open, and we will see and hear just how m- many lies indeed He has been telling us. That in God we do have a plan. That in God we do have a purpose. And that in God you are not worthless, but indeed worthy. And in God you are no accident. It doesn't matter what mama or daddy told you. You are no accident. There are no accidents in God, praise the Lord. People can be created in sin, hello, right? But make no mistake, the baby is not sin because every baby created is a blessing from God. Amen? God said, I knew you before I formed you in your mama's womb, right? Come on, somebody. Cracks me up, man, when people are like, so-and-so is pregnant. Oh, man, praise the Lord. Well, she's not married. Okay, I didn't say praise the Lord that she was having sex with this many people. I didn't say praise the Lord that there's a baby growing inside of her because that's a blessing from God. Yeah. Right? So we have to begin to watch the way that we respond to people. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, so we are all created with a plan and with a purpose. None of us are an accident. God created each of us on purpose, with a purpose, for a purpose, for such a time as this. And this is the thing that Jesus is telling his disciples. He says, man, I have a plan for you. And my plan for you guys is for you guys to carry the gospel message to the ends of the earth. My plan for you guys, and, 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 and you're going to need the empowerment, you're going to need the promise from my father. But my plan is that you will carry the good news to all people. But don't be in a hurry. Because if you're in a hurry, you're going to screw everything up. So you have to wait before you go. And then the disciples started singing, so should I stay or should I go now? Come on, you got to let me know. Right. (laughs) And if you think about this, man, before we can do what it is that we're called to do, before we can begin to step into the plan that he has for us, before we can begin to walk in the purpose that he has for us, we need to wait. So two points. Point number one is this. Wait on the Lord, but don't wait for the Lord. Strange, right? See, we wait on the Lord by not going, 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 and screwing everything up 
when we're supposed to be waiting, 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 waiting for the baptism of Holy Spirit, waiting for the purpose of Holy Spirit, waiting for the directions of Holy Spirit, waiting for the filling of Holy Spirit. Oftentimes we just want to go and we don't want the wait. And we don't wait for the Lord, meaning, what I mean by that is, after the Holy Spirit gives us the direction, after the Holy Spirit falls upon us, we're supposed to go. Oftentimes, we wait, and we don't go, and we claim we just need confirmation. I need this, and I need that, and we claim that we're waiting on God, and the whole time God's going, no, no, I'm, I'm waiting for you. Holy Spirit's falling upon you. Holy Spirit's filled you. Holy Spirit's anointed you. Holy Spirit's giving you direction. You're waiting. See, and what we begin to do is we begin to use God as a leash to make ourselves feel good and to let people know, I'm willing, but God just has, God has me waiting. When truth be told is it's not God having you waiting. Fear is actually what's holding you back. And we just put God on fear and try to name it so that we feel better about ourselves by not going. See, Holy Spirit has told us to go. And I believe that too many times Christians do one of two things. One thing that we do is we go without power. Too many times the church has gone without power. We try to go in our direction. There's only one direction. I'm not even going to go there, praise the Lord. It'll be like 98 degrees up in here. <laughs> Mercy. But y'all all in sync, praise the Lord. Somebody <laughs> Christmas. Where them Backstreet Boys at? Hey, over there, praise the Lord. All right, let's stop. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but oftentimes, man, we do. We, we try to go without the power. We try to go in our direction. We, we try to go without Holy Spirit. We don't wait. And the other thing that we end up doing is we wait too long. We wait too long and we miss what it is that Holy Spirit was trying to get us to get up and do. Listen to me. I promise you every single day people die and they go to a real hell. Well, they're to blame. No, no, no. If you want the truth, we are. He didn't tell them to spread the gospel from nation to nation. He told us. And if we're not going to do what it is that he told us to do, yeah. it's not their fault they didn't know. It's our fault that we didn't educate. Exactly. So oftentimes, man, we wait too long. Holy Spirit has fallen upon us. We need to indeed get up and go. When we know that we know that we know that we know that we are supposed to go, but yet we stay waiting. And the only reason why we stay waiting is fear. And in Acts 1-4, Jesus is telling them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait. Wait for the Holy Spirit. And why is that? Because what Jesus is telling his disciples, man, is, is or what, what's going on with the disciples, thank you, Lord, is that they just realized that Jesus is alive. And this is mind-blowing. This is the strangest thing to them that they had ever seen. This guy, indeed, everything that he said about his death, burial, and resurrection, indeed, is the truth. They had all hope lost. And now they are filled with hope again. All the doubts that they had have just been chased out. They're excited. They're pumped up. They're amped, man. They want to get out there and tell anyone and everyone about the resurrection of Jesus. But yet, Jesus said to wait. Have you ever had something so good, uh, some of you gossipers, something so juicy, but yet you just had to wait to tell it? <laughs> right? You're like, oh, man, this stinks. I want to tell you so Ooh, and you try to give code. <laughs> right? You wouldn't believe what Mandy Ustis just said. <laughs> right? But I'm not telling, Lord, because I didn't say Brandy just. Oops, forgive me, Lord. Pray for him. <laughs> right? But, but waiting stinks, man. Right? Like, no, you never call a place of business and when they tell you, you're going to be on the waiting time for an operator. It's 20 minutes. Nobody goes, yes, boom, I got 20 minutes. 
Nobody's ever excited about the long waits in the doctor's office. Dude, I'm so glad my appointment was at 1 and it's 1.45 and I have another meeting at 2. This is awesome. <laughs> Never excited when you walk into Island Pharmacy and you round that uh, uh, thing there with the cards and there's a long line in the DMV. <laughs> Why are you guys complaining? This is awesome. Right. Nobody, we'd never do that because waiting stinks. <laughs> this past week, man, we waited in the car dealer shop for five and a half hours. <laughs> right? My wonderful brother-in-law, to God be the glory for him, bought my beautiful sister a, a 2018 uh, Camry. It's a beautiful car, right? And while, while we're sitting there, man, praise the Lord, uh, we take it for a test drive, right? We, that thing gets up to about 120 in about uh, three seconds. No, I'm picking. But, um, but we're in the car with this, with this cat, man, and uh, uh, Mr. Nolan, and 19-year-old 19, uh, 19 uh, pool shark, man. Cool conversations with him. But uh, he actually met Tom Cruise. But, um, uh, but anyway, so we're in this uh, car with him. We're test driving the car, and uh, I begin to ask him just about uh, uh, gang activity in Elizabeth City and, and stuff like that, and uh, um, when he asked me why, I told him because we're going to take it to this field in Jackie. No, I'm just picking. But, um, so, so uh, I begin to ask him, and uh, Johnny goes, yeah, man, you know, uh, uh, we have some ministries, you know, that, that reaches out to, uh, 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 to, you know, whether people are dealing with addictions or whatever it may be. And uh, Johnny goes, this is actually our pastor right here, man. And the guy was like, oh, wow, that's cool. And Johnny says, uh, yeah, he doesn't look, he doesn't fit the mold of a pastor, you know, blah, blah. So we just started talking about that. And, like, instantly, my man goes, uh, I, I stopped going to church a while back. And he starts to get quiet. And you guys know me, I like to talk. <laughs> but Holy Spirit was going, wait, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. And he goes, yeah, I stopped going when my granddad died. He said, see, my grandparents raised me. Boom, instantly he changed the subject. And I'm like, I'm not finished. <laughs> the Holy Spirit said, wait. Talk about the car and everything else in between. Probably about an hour and a half go by. Johnny had to step out on, uh, uh, on a phone call. And so I said to the young man, I said, uh, hey, Nolan, I said, man, uh, I'm not going to preach to you. I said, but in the car you told me that you stopped going to church because your granddad died and you were mad. I said, were you mad at God? And he put his head down. And he said, you know, man, I'm ashamed to say, especially in front of you now, knowing that you're uh, a pastor, he said, uh, but yes, sir. And I told him, I said, man, I said, you know, because the Holy Spirit told me to go. So I'll go, praise the Lord. I said, you know what's awesome, bro, is God is God enough, and he's a big enough God to take your frustrations. He's a big enough God for you to be angry at him. He's a big enough God for you to be upset. I said, you know what, man, truth be told, I understand. That wasn't only your granddad, but that was also your dad. I get it. And I said, but here's what I want you to do, Nolan. I said, I just ask you to begin to reconsider talking to him. I said, because I could just imagine your granddad up in heaven wanting you to do the same thing. I said, because you want to see your granddad again and your granddad wants to see you again. I said, but Nolan, you're the only one that holds the power to that. I said, so just try to begin to reconsider talking to God. Right, boom, end of it. So as we're leaving, man, uh, uh, he hugs Johnny, he hugs me, he's, you know, said that it was awesome hanging out with us and stuff. And I told him as, as he was walking away, it was like a movie. He's walking away and I said, Nolan! <laughs> no, it wasn't like that. <laughs> And I said, Nolan, and he, I said, uh, man, just consider what it is that we talked about. I rocked my world, man. He said, uh, I already have, sir. I already have. And God bless you guys. Right? So that's the power of waiting on Holy Spirit, right? When we wait on Holy Spirit, amazing things begin to happen. And then when we go, when Holy Spirit tells us to go, we see those amazing things take place, right? Without Holy Spirit, everything will crumble. I would have jacked that whole conversation up, right? And we probably wouldn't have got a sweet deal on the car. I'm not socking to these preachers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? But to God be the glory. When you wait, that's when we get that boldness. That's when that power comes. And then when we go, 
we execute in that boldness and in that power. He says to wait. Wait for the promise. And then we wait for the promise for number two to get our J.J. Evans on. Dino Might! Yeah. Right? <laughs> Star stage screen in the ghetto. Right? Y'all remember that show? Come on, somebody. Yeah. Right, but we get our J.J. Uh, Evans on, man, indeed, when we wait. See, Acts 1.8 says this. But you shall receive power. Hello. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem. Right? And all in uh, Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. You shall receive power. And I talk about this scripture. It's one of my favorite. It's uh, uh, on the side of my neck. We talk about this all the time. That's that dunamis power. Dunamis meaning dynamite. Dynamite. There's our J.J. Evans, right? So we get that dynamite on. Now when, when Holy Spirit falls upon us, it's that explosive power. So when we wait to be filled with that explosive power from Holy Spirit, that's when we are able to truly be sent out and explode in the uh, 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 miraculous that God Almighty has planned and purposed us and called us to do. We can't do it without that. It will be a dud. But my goodness, man, if we wait to be filled and then get filled and then step out, man, it's going to be explosive in everything that we do. Jesus told them to wait until they receive Holy Spirit. We need to wait so that we can receive Holy Spirit. Why? Because what Jesus is ultimately telling them and what Jesus is telling us is our purpose, our plan, and our calling is far greater than us. And that we cannot do it by ourselves. But indeed that we need our helper. And Holy Spirit is our helper. That explosive, that dynamite, that blast that's dwelling inside of us, gives us that boldness, gives us that strength, gives us that endurance, right? It gives us the ability to do and to conquer what it is that he has called us to do. Look at this, in, in Mark uh, fourteen fifty, it says this, Then everyone deserted him and fled. Off the top of your head, does anybody even know what that's talking about? Can you help me out, because I'm not sure. No, I'm making... Think about this. Then they deserted him and fled. What's taking place here? This is when Jesus is arrested. His disciples who have been with him day in and day out deserted him and fled. With him the last three years and they deserted him and fled. They were abandoned or he was abandoned by them. My question is, in the last three years, how many times, three months, three weeks, three days, three hours, how many times have you abandoned Jesus? So we can look at this and be like, man, that's crazy. But truth be told, how many times have we done it? Yeah. How many times have we walked away from Jesus? See, Jesus knew their fears, just like Jesus indeed knows ours. Jesus knew what they would be and Jesus knew what we would be up against. So Jesus tells them to wait. Wait for the promise of the Father in receiving Holy Spirit. Because if we think about this, how many times have we been scared to do something that the Lord has called us to do? Scared to step into the calling that he's called us to uh, step into. Scared to step into that boldness. Too scared to, uh, uh, to come out of our seats during worship. Too afraid to walk across the street and invite somebody to church or over to your house for dinner. Too scared to be in a, a store and lay the hands on someone who you see a, a sick or a deformity. But yet, we're too scared. Too scared to pray for folk in public. Jesus said, wait. Wait for Holy Spirit. He knew that they, just like us, need Holy Spirit to do the calling. To do the purpose so that we wouldn't abandon him. Because the truth is, the power from Holy Spirit is in the waiting, the baptism, and then the going. But if we do not wait, we will never have the true power to go. See, it's like this. Me and my wife, man, we love to take our boys to the beach, which is absolutely awesome. Because uh, before our boys, we hated the beach. <laughs> right? 
And one of our favorite things to do when we're at the beach is fly kites. But it's fun, especially with a three-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old. It's awesome. <laughs> but what's cool, man, is if, if there's no wind, then your kite's kind of dead. So what you have to do is you have to make the wind if there's no wind. Right? So you have to make the wind. But the truth be told, if you're not an amazing runner like me, <laughs> then after a while, you're going, long for, you're going to run for a long time. you got to get faster because the kids are going, make it go higher, Daddy. Make it go higher. I'm like, yeah, why don't you run with it? <laughs> right? But there's, there's, no, there's no wind, right? And when you stop, the wind's going to stop. You're going to get fatigued. You're going to get tired. You're going to get worn out. And truth be told, guys, it's the same thing when we try to go without Holy Spirit. All we're going to do is be running on our own power. We're going to be trying to make our own miracles. We're going to be trying to make our own breakthroughs. We're going to be trying to do deliverance on our own. We're going to be trying to be witnesses to him on our own. We're going to be trying to spread the gospel for him on our own. And all it's going to do is get us tired. It's going to cause us to run around like crazy, but to run around and do absolutely nothing. Some of us are running from fear or running due to fear. Many of us, man, are running from life. We claim Christ and that we're going to step into the calling, but yet we're running the opposite way. We claim Christ and we're going to step into the purpose, but yet that's just it. We're not waiting. We're running. And we're running around trying to do life, trying to do God. And all we're doing is self. Truth be told, man, no matter what it is that we're running for or from, you failed the moment we begin to run and not wait. We have to to wait. There's so many people out there running and doing good things. But make no mistake, a good thing is not a God thing. And it doesn't even matter if it's in ministry. There's a lot of ministries that are birthed that are good, but they have nothing to do with God. Because people have failed in the waiting. The Hebrew word is warach, warach. Sorry, I just spit on somebody and I apologize. <laughs> The, the Greek word is a pneuma, right? And what it means, both words mean breath, wind, blast. See, we need wind to fly a kite. And we need the breath of God to allow us to soar. We need the breath of God, the breath of the Spirit of God, the breath of pneuma, the breath of Holy Ghost that allows us to soar. And when he breathes that breath inside of us, it is the wind beneath our sails. Come on, somebody. Right? We need that wind. He gives us that blast, that explosive, that dynamite. Again, to do what it is that God has called us to do. He says that you will receive the power from Holy Spirit will come, when Holy Spirit will come upon you to be my witnesses. Truth be told, pay attention to scripture, you can't even be a true witness to God without the breath of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me. God is letting us know out of Acts 1.8 that we cannot do what it is that he's called us to do without Holy Spirit. He's letting us to know, Christians, stop focusing on the returning date of Jesus and be like the disciples and grab a hold of our job, our task, our purpose, our plan, our calling, and that's to carry the message of Jesus Christ throughout this entire world. He has given us the power, the wind, the strength, the ability, the endurance, that dynamite, that blast to do just that. And he gives us this, not just in our everyday living, but he gives us this so that we will be able to do the task, the plan, the purpose, the calling. That he has given us. Concentrate 
on the souls that are out there who don't know Jesus. That think that Holy Spirit isn't strange, but think that Holy Spirit is freaky, fake, ridiculous. Be a witness to them. So they will begin to see that he's strange, yes, but in the uh, 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 mysterious, right? Not in the freaky. And begin to watch the population of hell decrease and the population of heaven increase. Because our focus has begun to change, right? When he tells us uh, 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 that we can begin to be witnesses, despite our mess-ups, despite the crazy things that we have in our life, despite uh, uh, our situations, despite our circumstances, that we can be witnesses, despite the consequences. Think about this. The disciples are going to face consequences, and sometimes so will we. But despite the consequences, that we would have the power, the ability, the wind, the blast to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Even if it meant that we would become a martyr in doing so. See, God empowered them just like he empowers us to be faithful witnesses. Even when we are faced with the craziest of oppositions. But it's through Holy Spirit. I'm going to wrap this up here in one second if I can get my worship team to come up. But think about this. Jesus is telling these men the promise of the wind, the promise of the blast, the promise of Holy Spirit to the same men who scattered and ran like uh, uh, scaredy cats when he was being arrested. And they fled to save their own life. Absolutely crazy. But yet, now here's Jesus telling these same guys to wait. Wait for Holy Spirit because if you don't, you're going to run like a scaredy cat. Wait for Holy Spirit because if you don't, you're not going to have the power to endure. Wait for Holy Spirit because if not, you're not going to have the boldness to step in front of the very ones who will want to take your life. So wait. Wait for the promise of the Father. Wait for the promise of Holy Spirit. Wait for that baptism so that you would stand so bold in your faith, even in the face of death. And he goes on in Acts chapter 2 verse 1. It says, when the Feast of the Pentecost came, they were gathered together in one place without warning. There was like a sound, like a strong wind, gear force. No one could tell where it came from. And it filled the whole building. Then like a wildfire, Holy Spirit spread through their ranks. And they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. We see the presence of the wind. The baptism of Holy Spirit. And now all of a sudden, people begin to hear their language. But what do they do? This is strange. They must be drunk. And the people begin to come against them. And now Peter, one of the 11 who ran like a scaredy cat, the one who denied Jesus three times due to fear of being arrested, Simon Peter, boldly, gladly, and faithfully, stepped up in the face of opposition to speak a message of repentance, and a message of receiving the same promise from the Father of Holy Spirit to be upon them and upon their kids and upon their kids as kids. And you know what? That day, 3,000 people were saved. 3,000 people gave their life to Christ. Can you imagine if we walked around with that same explosive faithfulness inside of us? That we would step up no matter what the face of opposition looks like, but that we would step up and begin to declare repentance begin to declare the promise of the father can you imagine if 3,000 people on Roanoke Island got saved everything would change the same thing that changed Simon Peter the same thing that changed the other disciples was Holy Spirit and it happened when Holy Spirit poured himself upon them Holy Spirit empowers us to do what Christ has called us to do. Just like he poured himself upon them, I promise you, church, today, he wants to pour himself upon you. Christ has a calling for you. Christ has a purpose for you. It might be strange, okay. We can rock and roll with that. 
So let Holy Spirit begin to break everything down for you. So you might be running right now like a scaredy cat. But when he pours himself down upon you, just like those 11 scaredy cats changed and began to change the world, so too will you begin to change by the empowerment of Holy Spirit. Your change, your family will change, your workplace will change, your school will change, your church will change, your community will change, your state will change, our country will change. We can indeed change the world. So we have to understand this is how the church launched. It was through the empowerment of Holy Spirit. Without Holy Spirit, we don't have church. We play church. We need Holy Spirit. We can't change our communities, our families, or anything else without Him. But with Him, we sure as heck can change absolutely everything. When we receive the baptism of Holy Spirit. When we step into that plan, that calling from Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you right now, my King, that... Uh, Lord, I'm reminded in Genesis, chapter 1, verse 2, my Lord, that the Holy Spirit was hovering. And right now, I just can't help but to think that, Holy Spirit, you're here and you're hovering over your people. And God, when, and when God began to speak in Genesis, and when he spoke this, Holy Spirit, you created it. You caused it to be. When God spoke light, boom, there it was. When God spoke plants, boom, there it was. Water, there it was. Anything and everything. Mountains, there they were. <laughs> my King, there's people right now, my Lord God, who I pray will begin to speak and call out your name. As you're hovering, God, that they would begin to speak and allow you to create inside of them this dudamous power this life this hope this peace this patience this endurance this ability this purpose this plan this calling God that they would allow Holy Spirit to they would allow you to indwell in them God, that right now they're, they're sitting here and I pray, God, that as they're sitting here, they're waiting. They're waiting for you to fall upon them. God, so that you can send them out, my Lord God, against every demon in the upside down, God. Cast them out of people to cause them to be right side up, my Lord. God, that they would lay their hands on the sick, my Lord God, and begin to see people healed. Their eyes on the blind, God, and, and have the filling of Holy Spirit to fall upon them. That scales would fall off and that they would see. That, that their plugs in their ears would fall out, God, that they could hear, my Lord. God, that the, the lame would walk, my Lord Jesus, and the mute, my Lord God, would begin to talk and sing your praise, my Lord. But God, we cannot do any of that without our waiting. Without the promise of the Father of Holy Spirit to fall upon us. And God fall upon us. So Lord, so that we could go out and rescue people from death today. So if that's anybody right now in the house of God, man, you want to receive Jesus. Simply open up your heart right where you're sitting. There's no spiritual ritual that we have to go through. Matter of fact, as soon as you open up your heart, boom, there it is. The scripture says, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that you will be saved. Not can be, but will be. So the prayer isn't saving you. Opening up your heart and receiving Jesus as your Savior saves you. And if that's you, simply open up your heart right now and say, Jesus, I'm a sinner in the need of a Savior. And Lord, I thank you that due to my sins and due to myself, I have been trapped in the upside down. But Holy Spirit, I thank you for rescuing me and causing me to be right side up. So I'm waiting. Holy Spirit, here I am. Fall upon me. Baptize me. Lead, guide, direct me. Don't let me step ahead of you. And don't let me trail too far behind. But let me go when you tell me to go. And all God's baby said, Hallelujah.